It's Mr. O'Brien here from Explorers at Stapleton. All right, so today we're gonna be making Pokemon planters made from recycled soda bottles. So I hope you recognize this guy here. This is Bulbasaur. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using these recycled soda or seltzer bottles to make this guy here. So what you're gonna need is, like I said, you're gonna need a recycled soda bottle and you wanna make sure that you clean it out and you also want to peel the label off as best you can. If a little bit is left over, it's not a big deal, you're going to paint over that anyways, but try to peel the label as best you can. All right. If you don't have that size, you can also use a smaller size, this size here, or you can use a bigger size. All right. Now you're also going to need a pair of scissors. You are going to need some paint. All right. You're going to need the paint that all the star is. So for Bulbasaur's body, we have some turquoise paint. Um, for Bulbasaur's eyes, we have some white paint and we have some red paint. And for Bulbasaur's sign here, we have some light green paint. For his nose and his mouth, I use a Sharpie paint marker. If you don't have that, you can use a regular Sharpie marker or you could use black paint, okay? If you don't happen to have turquoise, what you can do is you can take blue, and green and mix it together and if you don't happen to have light green what you can do is take green and white and mix it together to lighten that up all right so you're also going to need two paint brushes a large one and a small one as well as a sharpie marker to draw your design and you're going to need something to put your paint on you can use a paper plate, or I actually have my own palette, so I'm gonna use that. All right, so those are all of the items you're gonna need to make this Bulbasaur Pokemon planter. All right, I'm gonna gather all my materials and come right back. See you soon. All right, so I have all my materials, so we're gonna start with our first step to making our Pokemon planter. The first step is to draw your design on your soda bottle, all right? So first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out about how tall I want my planter to be. Let's say about this tall and I'll make a little tiny mark there, all right, so that I know where I want to start. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing the ears, okay? And to do that, I'm going to make a little triangle, but I'm going to leave the bottom of the triangle open, all right? And then I'm going to make a line going across the bottle for their head as far as I want it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the other ear. All right, just like that. Got one ear, a line, and another ear. Then what I want to do is I want to start at one ear and I want to connect to the other ear. So I'm going to start at one ear and then I'm going to draw a line around my bottle connecting to the other ear here. All right, so we've got our Bulbasaur design drawn. So the next step is going to be to cut out your design. Now this part can be difficult, so you may want to have help from your parents to do this. Um, Sometimes the scissors, it takes a few tries to get a hole cut into the bottle to go ahead and start cutting. So um, I'm gonna get started. Sometimes it's best to kind of squish the bottle a little and take your scissors and kind of work them in there. And kind of poke a little hole. You can then get started here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my design once I get it started. All right, I'm gonna cut that out now. All right, so once you have your Bulbasaur shape cut out of your plastic bottle, you're gonna wanna make some decisions about where you're gonna put things. So, 
In our example here, Bulbasaur's eyes are like rounded triangle shape, as well as their sign above their eyes are also three rounded triangle shapes. And in their eyes, there's a little bit of a separate piece for the whites of the eyes and a small circle for their pupils, all right? Now at this time, you're not gonna draw the nose or the mouth. You're only gonna draw the eyes and the design on their forehead. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick a spot for my eyes to start. And like I said, it's gonna be kind of a rounded triangle here. Like that. All right, now I'm gonna move on to the other eye. I wanna try to make them even if I can. But if they're not, it's not a big deal. It'll be cool either way. So I've got my eyes started. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my line for the white of my eye. Just make a little line in the eye right there. Just like that. And the same for the other one. Just like that. Now I want to make a little circle in the eye for the pupil so I don't forget that part. All right, and another little circle here, just like that. Now I want to make the design on the forehead. So I'm going to start on top and I'm going to make a small little rounded triangle just like that. Then I'm going to pick another side and I'm going to start the tip at the bottom of the other triangle as a guide. And again, I'll make that small little rounded triangle like that. And then for the last triangle, I'm gonna again start with the tip and make the base here just like that. All right, so I've got my eyes and my cool uh, design on the forehead. All right, so now to start painting. What you're gonna need is I would start with your detailed brush, your smaller brush, so you can paint around the eyes and the forehead design so that that can dry while you're painting everything else. So, for myself, I'm gonna get my palette here and I'm gonna get my turquoise paint and give that a little shake. And I'm gonna put that paint directly on the palette here, just like that, all right? And I'm gonna dip my paintbrush in. All right. And I'm gonna go ahead and start painting the detail areas around the eyes and the forehead symbol. Being careful not to get too much paint either in the eyes or on the symbol. That's why you wanna use a smaller detail brush for this. If you get a little bit going over the lines, it's not a huge deal. And honestly, if you get a larger amount, it's not a big deal. We can fix that later. In fact, I'm gonna get just a big amount here just so I can show you exactly how I would fix that. Oh, see, I went out of the lines and I got that teal paint, that aqua paint in the eye. And that's not where it's supposed to be, but I can't fix it right now, so I've gotta let it dry first. But you can fix it, so it's no big deal if you get a little paint in some areas you don't intend to. All right, so I'm gonna finish around the detailed areas of this right here. All right, so now I've got my detailed areas done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my small brush off to the side and I'm gonna get my larger brush. And now I'm gonna paint all the entire outside of the bottle. So the sides and the bottom, everywhere. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, so now I have my first coat of paint on my Bulbasaur planter, all right? As you can see, the first coat's kind of thin. You can still sort of see through him. So you're gonna wanna do two coats. For this friend here, I did two coats, all right? So what you can do in between while you're waiting for your first coat of paint to dry is you can rinse off your brushes either in a cup of water or if you go to the sink and turn on the sink and rinse them off, all right? Once they're rinsed off, you can give them a quick dry 
with a paper towel. All right, and for this next part, you're gonna wanna use your detailed brush or your smaller brush as this part has some more details. So I'm gonna turn him around and I'm gonna start with the white paint for the inside of the eyes, all right? So I'm gonna take a little paint and put it on my palette here. I'm gonna dip my paintbrush into my paint and I'm gonna bring it over to where the eyes are, right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just put a dollop where the white of the eye is of the eye people there. And then I'm gonna do the same for the other eye, just a little drop there, just like that. Now for the outside of the eyes, all right, you're gonna need some white as well. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna go ahead and paint the white in that area as well. Now, remember, in this other eye, I got some of the aqua paint in there. So, how you can fix that is just take your white and you're gonna cover over that. So lay that paint on pretty thick. You may have to do more than one coat to try to cover up paint with white paint or another color. All right, so now I've got the whites of my eyes done. I'm not gonna do my red just yet. I'm gonna let the white dry before I do my red. All right, I'm gonna rinse my brush. All right, and then I'm gonna dry it off a little bit. Then I'm gonna take my light green paint. Now remember I said if you don't have light green paint, you can go ahead and use some regular green paint and mix some white in to make it a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna take my light green paint and put some on my palette or paper plate if that's what you have. And now I'm gonna paint the little design on the forehead here. So I'm gonna dip it in and I'm gonna fill in that triangle area. If you go out of the lines a little, it's not a big deal. You can always fix it with some teal paint afterwards if you want to. But do your best. Try to keep that shape. All right. So, there we go. As you can see, I did kind of get a little bit messy on one of these, so I may have to touch it up with some teal paint afterwards once it's dry. So I'm gonna do that a little later. All right, so now I actually need to let this guy dry for a little while before I add any red to the eyes or I add a second coat of paint. So I'm gonna let it dry for a while. Um, when I did this front earlier, I let it dry for about 15 minutes or so and it was pretty dry when I came back. So just let it dry and then I'll see you in about 15 minutes or so. All right, all right. Now my Bulbasaur here is pretty dry. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna do the red of his eyes. So I'm gonna take my red paint and put it on my palette here. And I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna dip it in the paint and I'm going to paint the red inside of the eyes. Being careful not to paint too much over the white you know, either on the inside or on the outside there. All right, almost done with that eye. <coughs> All right, <coughs> excuse me, got that eye done. All right, moving on to the next eye. I done here all right so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fix any details that I need to fix before moving on to my second coat so I rinsed my brush off and then I dried it and if you look here at the forehead uh, design I've got some areas that I need to touch up with my aqua 
So I'm going to take and dip my paintbrush into my aqua and I'm going to go ahead and touch those outside line areas up so that the shapes look nice and crisp like those triangles we want them to look like. And again, I'm going to do the other one. Okay, so now that I've got those areas fixed, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna apply the second coat to my detailed areas, um, around the detailed areas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around the eyes, and in between the forehead area, on the other eye so that I've got a nice crisp second coat all right almost done here all right so as you can see I've got my second coat there and all the around the detailed areas so I'm gonna put my detailed brush aside and now I'm gonna get my larger brush and I'm gonna do a second coat all around uh, the Bulbasaur here. All right, I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so as you can see here, I've got my second coat completed. So I'm gonna take a quick look at my Bulbasaur and make sure there isn't any areas on him I want to touch up. It looks like I may want to touch up the whites on the outside of his eyes a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my small detailed brush paint brush and rinse that out if I haven't done that already and wipe it off with the paper towel. And I'm going to dip it in my white paint. And I'm just going to go over the outside of the eye again just so that it's thick enough there. And again one more time on the other side. All right, and there. Looks pretty good to me. So now I have to set aside my Bulbasaur and let the second coat dry for about another 15 to 20 minutes before we can put the nose and mouth on. All right, I'm gonna let it dry. I'll see you in about 15 to 20 minutes. All right, so this Bulbasaur is dry enough for the last step, and that is adding the nose and the mouth. So for the nose, just in between the eyes here, just underneath, gonna add two dots now as I said earlier I'm using a sharpie paint pen if you don't have one of those you can use a regular sharpie and if you don't have a regular sharpie or a sharpie paint pen you can use black paint all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and draw my nose on by doing two little dashes just under the eyes there just like that all right and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the mouth so for the mouth what you could do is you can take a look at this mouth here and kind of use it as a guide if you want something to copy or you can kind of make it yourself so I'm gonna look at that and use it as a guide but what I'm gonna notice is that I'll start by the edge of the eye and move my marker down and as I do so and I get down to the bottom then I'm gonna move it up in another rounded line almost as if I'm making a W but not a very big W but a slight W and it's gonna come back down again and it's gonna go back up at the end all right just like that. And the last part is you want to add the teeth. So Bulbasaur has two little fangs that hang out at the bottom of those first lines there when they get almost to the bottom. And again on the other side has another fang as well. So 
sometimes you gotta give those pens a shake. For that pink to really come out. Alright. Alright. So there you have it. We've got our Bulbasaur. So I would leave Bulbasaur out overnight to dry, just to make sure he's fully dry. And then you can enjoy your Bulbasaur planter. Okay. I'd love to see your pictures and comments, and I hope to see you soon. All right, bye-bye now.